joined and delighted to be joined this evening by uh, a guest in Vinny Farty, who would be well known to people in Limerick soccer circles after his time with, with Limerick FC in the 2015 season. Uh, Vinny, first and foremost, how is retirement treating you? Um, as well as can be in, in, in the current circumstances, but um, now, look, uh, I'm I'm uh, itching to get back playing at some level, but um, uh, look, no real complaints, a little bit jealous of the guys, but make do. <laughs> Thanks for having yeah. me, Adrian, by the way. Oh, no problem whatsoever. I'd like to have you. But uh, on the first note, uh, Vinny, uh, Salt Hill Devon was your, your first port call um, in the youth scene. And obviously you were part of a very successful period as well for Salt Hill Devon. You had the Dr. Tony O'Neill Cup win, I believe, in 2006, which was unheard of for a team that was outside of, of League of Ireland level, which Salt Hill were at, at that time. Did that give you a, a very good grounding to what turned out to be a very uh, solid and long-lasting League of Ireland career? Yeah, it did. Um, you know, it, it, that's, I think, everything that I, you know, all the opportunities I ended up getting were, were on the back of, of that and of, of Sawtill Devon. Um, some great people like Ollie Daniels involved at the club there that really kind of helped put my name out there. Um, I remember when I went in for my initial discuss discussions with Galway United, he, he he actually sat down at the table with me. So, no, look, that, that initial Sawtill Devon um, experience was was kind of everything to get my name out there and um the tony the dr tony o'neill win was was crazy i wish i was a little bit older where i could have really um i suppose uh appreciated it because it's it's the only time i've won something in football uh i've, I've been a runner-up in pretty much everything in in ireland but um no it was nice to get a win um and you know some great players there too you yeah, moved on to, to your League of Ireland, your local League of Ireland club, uh, Galway United, who had just turned, if I, if I remember correctly, full-time, uh, Vinny, at that stage. I know they've been promoted in kind of controversial circumstances as well in 2006, with Dundo uh, ahead of Dundalk, who had actually finished ahead of him in the league. Um, what was it like, I suppose, making the step up originally and actually the, the joy, I suppose, of playing for your local club and having the choice to do that? Yeah, um, first and foremost, it was a massive step up. Um, I didn't realize how how big it would be from from going playing like at the time I was a, a, an Irish junior international um, off the back of I suppose playing with Sawtill um, and it was still a, an incredible step up it was it was light years ahead to be honest um, it took me the guts of a year really to to kind of get comfortable and uh, and kind of hold my own in the league um, but Galway was brilliant at the time. It was it was a proper full time setup. Um, I suppose it's probably the reason why things happened. You know, a few years later, the budget was was huge, and I mean preseason camps in, in Spain and stuff like that. So they, maybe they pushed the boat out a little bit too far too quickly. But um, for for a young lad coming in, it was it was incredible, and um, it was a great group of lads too. You know, some players have gone on and kind of won everything, John Russell, Irla Davern, uh, Alan Kane, Seamus Keneally, uh, all those lads, you know, were there. Even Jay O'Shea uh, and Aaron Green were there at a period. So, um, no, it was, it was it was brilliant. A great time to be involved with Galway too. You were all quite young at the time as well, Vinny, that squad. Um, do you think that was the reason maybe that you might have, have underachieved if you had all of you at your prime, maybe, that you would have obviously finished uh, higher up the table, you'd imagine? Yeah, yeah. Look, if they if they had everyone in their prime, they probably would have been, you know, getting into Europe and that. But um, it's just a pity that the club kind of couldn't hold it together a bit longer. Um, probably, you know, didn't recruit overly well, didn't spend money probably in the correct places. Um, they've learned their lesson now, obviously, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's good to see that it's not going down that road again. But, yeah, it is a pity because, I mean, when you look at the players that have gone through the club, <laughs> they've they've pretty much achieved everything in the league, so it's just a pity because Galway, you know, ha in my lifetime really haven't been a European, you know, getting into European fixtures. Um, no, I've never got to see them in Europe. So, um, hopefully, in, in in the in the coming years, that can change. Yeah, kind of a very similar situation to us in in, in Limerick as well. To be honest, Galway and Limerick very very similar for for the size of the clubs in the past. Um, you also spent obviously time with St Patrick's Athletic, two different spells. Vinny as well. Um, always very big expectations among the supporters at St. Pat's. Uh, it was probably a different type of move for you moving to you go to Dublin. You actually had quite a good goal scoring record. Uh, what was your overall experience like uh, at St. Pat's? Uh, I loved it. Um, to be honest, uh, 
I've I've enjoyed myself everywhere I've gone, but uh, Pats, yeah, at the time I, I had quite a few offers, um, and it was a big decision because it was kind of um, I suppose financially there was there was better offers on the table, but I just I don't know why I I always liked Richmond and it just felt like the right move after after I met Pete Mahan at the time and um, I loved it there, really good club, really community real community feel um everyone makes you feel welcome you're down the local shop people are talking to you about the game at the weekend and um and i loved living in dublin um and luckily for me the motorway to galway had just opened up so it, it made coming home a bit more accessible even yeah absolutely you also uh moved on then to dundalk as well uh you you thanked obviously all your managers that you had and, and one of those was stephen kenny who's now the current uh, republic of ireland manager you you came into Dundalk Vinny which looks like just as the team tide was starting to turn at Dundalk uh the big players that well they came on to be big players you had signed that you did the likes of Chris Shields Dane Massey who had just come out from Bray Wanderers had been with at the club uh the, the fulcrum of the team was starting to come together at the nucleus of the team uh it was probably just just too early for yourself in that respect in, in the time you had spent at Dundalk yeah uh look it was it was it was Stephen's first year um and they they signed really well. Um, they had Stevie O'Donnell, um, Richie Towle, a lot of the guys they have now, like like you mentioned, Massey, Hoban, um, and it was a really really good squad. Um, frustrating for myself. Uh, I don't think I ever really gave a proper account <coughs> of myself. But at the same time, I had no complaints because Pat Hoban just halfway through the year just took off. He just caught on fire entirely. Um, scoring left right and center and then at the end of the season it kind of came was i going to sit there and be, be be back up again for another year uh it you know dave mcmillan was actually after coming in so i was potentially going to be third choice so i decided to come back to galway go back to university and um try and get uh, something behind myself for for when the inevitable day of retirement came um so look it, it worked out for me well timing wise um because Galway had just come back into the league at the same time. So I was able to go back and play with Galway and combine that with, with studying. So, um, no, it's, you know, I, I loved my time there. It was brilliant. Uh, we finished second that year, kind of got a bit robbed in a cup semi final. We two sent yeah. off after 20 minutes. Um, but it could, it could have been more. Um, but yeah, look, look, it's it was no surprise to me to see what went on and happened. Well, maybe the European stuff was a bit of a surprise, but I knew they were going places. Yeah, that was actually a question I was going to ask you. Could you see the success that that followed? But obviously, finishing second in the league, there was potential there. Um, you mentioned as well the the draw that game. That that's always a, a one that sticks in my memory. You know, down to nine men. I think was it after only half an hour or something like that. Yeah. And um, two, well, particularly Chris Shields' uh, raid was was very disappointing. You yeah. could see why Darren Meenan in the modern game might have been sent off. But I remember Stephen Kenny threatening to. He said he was on night live in RT. He was threatening to take players off the pitch. That's how frustrating it was on the day. I think he actually turned around to the bench and, and mentioned it, but I think Vinnie Perth shot a, shot the idea down quite quite quickly. <laughs> but but yeah, it was it was it, I, I think leading up to it, a few decisions had gone against us too, which obviously add to it. But um, we actually nearly near I think um, Chirna Mulvena nearly ne nearly scored an equaliser yeah. late on, and <laughs> it, I, I think those games go to a replay, so we would have probably fancied ourselves in a replay, but. Um, yeah, very frustrating because the season before I I had I had played in the cup final in the Aviva with Pats, and it's where you want to get back to. And it was kind of my goal after that. That was always what I wanted. I wanted to get back to a cup final in the Aviva. Um and unfortunately I never never got to do it again. But um yeah, it's uh it's 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 um it's fantastic experience playing in the Aviva and it's something that I suppose we missed out on that year. Yeah, before we go on to your different spells at your hometown club, Galway, uh, 2015 is one of the more memorable seasons and talked about seasons down down here in Limerick. Uh, obviously, Treaty United are now the senior club. Limerick FC still have an underage system and you were with Limerick FC in 2015. I think it's fair to say, Vinny, that it was a tale of two halves for both yourself and the club that year. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, so, yeah, I came down to Limerick um kind of had a bit of a contract dispute at Galway um which 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 are normal you know these things happen um 
and went to Limerick at the time. Um, my fiance now, but my 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 girlfriend at the time was was working down there. She was a guard in Limerick, so um, it just made sense. It was it was commutable for university, and it was you know I was still living in Galway, um, and I couldn't get over how much I liked it down there. Um, it was because at the start of the year, it was kind of a bit. Where were they going to be training? Uh, they were they were in Jackman Park. They were meant to be going to Marcus Field, and we didn't really know how the season was going to be. But then halfway through, it just just took off. Um, I think it was a win against Sligo, um, and things just built from there. But there were some great players in that squad, so it wasn't really. It was kind of more unperforming, underperforming before that. Um, but yeah, it was it was an incredible year. Um, to be honest, you know, even though Galway is, you know the club I supported growing up. One of the regrets I'd probably have is leaving Limerick that time. I, I wish I stayed there, uh, you know, and helped get them back up into the Premier. But I suppose Galway being my club, um, the club I supported, the heartstrings were being pulled a little bit. So I ended up leaving again, but um, I, I, I really enjoyed my time down there. Yeah, it was a real roller coaster because you didn't have a win for 21 matches. Uh, Martin Russell was coming in for serious criticism. All of a sudden, you go to the markets. You return to markets field. Uh, there's thousands going to games now. It did dwindle before. We must remember it did dwindle before until the Sligo result. It kind of changed after that. The momentum was steadily building. Seven wins from the last twelve games uh, was was superb. And even the very unlucky against Dundalk. I remember one it looked for until the seventy fifth minute, and they kind of ran through three goals fairly quick as they did that year. Uh, it was it was. It was incredible, and even the night in Sligo before we come on to the heartbreak, I suppose that came. It was, it was, it was superb. So even though, as I said, it ended in playoff heartbreak, it it, it was certainly memorable on all fronts. Yeah, yeah, that Sligo game was 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 incredible. We just had such confidence. I remember at the time, um, we really fancied ourselves going up there. Um, it wasn't like an overconfidence. We just knew that if we if we ticked it all, we 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 get the job done. Now it, it was a bit nervy at the end, but the kind of thing that was in our minds was we'll we'll draw to get a result against against Shamrock Rovers uh, in Tala. Uh, now thankfully they didn't for us, but I suppose ultimately it didn't really matter. Um, but that was one of the, one of the one of the highs of of, of my career for sure. Um, the feeling in the dressing room after that. Um, and it's just a pity the following Monday night we really didn't. I think we we really really had the better of uh, Finn Harps in the markets field in the first leg, and we probably should have beaten them by a few goals. Uh, going up there one nil up on that pitch with the kind of players we had, it probably wasn't going to suit us too much. Uh, you know, you think of the likes of Lee J Lynch, he, he he's not suited to pretty much a, a bog <laughs> yeah. of a football pitch. So um, a lot of regret there too. That was probably the low point, to be honest. Um, even more so than the cup final. That was a, a tough night. Yeah, that was that was certainly the low point because, as you mentioned, you had been very exciting going forward, but had been quite suspect all season at the back. But that's what made it so memorable. Was you know you had a lot of four threes, three twos, uh, this kind of thing that that was going on all season. Uh, I was, as I said, it was very disappointing. But you also had a great rapport. In the second half of the season, I mean, Ian Turner, Dean Clark, and yourself were, were scoring goals and, and winning games for for Limerick all all on your own at times. Especially, you remember the game in Galway where you all scored as well, and and you were barely getting any odds in the bookies for it anymore uh, at that point. But uh, it was it was obviously the the feeling in in Finn Park was was utter dejection as as well. Um, you know, it's it it's funny because they, what happened afterwards we all see as probably what happened was proved to be the end. In Pat, of Pat O'Sullivan because you know he he kept the squad full time in the first division. They were winning matches six and seven nil. Uh, Vinny, I suppose I know you said you regretted leaving, but as it turned out, uh, Limerick walked the division afterwards and 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 never unfortunately fulfilled the potential and that they had on the crest of the wave at the end of that season. Yeah, yeah, it is a pity what happened there. Um, you know, I suppose I wasn't involved, so I I I don't even really know. But it looked like it was just it was like. The end of the season i was there the crowds were huge um you know obviously it's not going to be the same in in the first division but even when they came up the first year back um they were quite competitive you, you know you had rodrigo tossi up top and you know they, they had some good players again i think they finished mid-table but then i think the following season the budget obviously would have taken a hit and and lads left and it just uh, relegation obviously can change things for every team but it's just such a pity but it's great now that 
they are back um you know a city a, a soccer city like limerick definitely need to be in the league um and the league of ireland's better for it and you know i suppose tomorrow night is is uh two two provincial rivals coming head to head so i think we're all looking forward to that yeah it's great to, to be returning to aim and dc park uh, tomorrow evening as you mentioned galway hosting treaty united it's a game where both teams are coming in off the back of, of differing results. What's the mood like in the camp in Galway, Vinny? Because from the outside, it looks like it's been quite a frustrating start. Yeah, like I, I haven't really, on purpose, I haven't really been chatting to any of the lads because I, I don't want to, <laughs> to look like I'm, I'm, I'm prime for information. But um, I, I would imagine, and I think it's still um, quite positive you know it's such such early doors but I'd imagine they are frustrated that that at loan game would have been a, a bit of a kick in the teeth to them um because they had a, a fantastic preseason um you know they've obviously strengthened the squad again um you know and and John's been able to push his mark on the team so they're definitely definitely going to be some frustrations there but you know the, the game being called off last week would have been a bit of a, a blow to them too because they would have wanted the right um the wrong done to them or they done to themselves the following or the previous friday so um they're going to be up for tomorrow um i'd say we'll see them coming out of the blocks in the first 10 20 minutes you know high high intensity in in, in treaties in treaties face yeah i was speaking to your former teammate yesterday evening mark ludden who's obviously playing with us in in treaty this year and he kind of agreed with my own sentiment that you'd probably prefer the galway team who obviously as we know are one of the favourites for the title. You prefer if they were coming in off the back of two victories and probably taking your the eye off you slightly because now they're going to be definitely fully focused because they're looking to kickstart their own season. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like I know um today they got that result, you know, turned in their favour, the the Cabin Teeley game. Now that could be obviously um, you know, I, I'd imagine they'll appeal it, but um even still that you know they they're they're not counting that as a win i know yeah. it is on the table but in their own heads they're not thinking yeah we, we we five points so they still have a lot to prove um i'd imagine there'll be quite a few changes um and there'll be lads coming in looking to make their mark um so yeah i i, I definitely would agree with with mark but at the same time um from from what i've seen and from what i've heard um you know treaty have have completely held their own have been very solid defensively and you know they five points and they you know that's all with three sendings off too so <laughs> <laughs> which i've never seen before by the way yeah. three in a row <laughs> yeah i think it's some sort of unwanted record really Vinny, because for a new club particularly as well to have three players sent off in your first three games uh, it certainly seems uh, a bit crazy and obviously tommy barrett was was livid after last week's game out the discipline they won't be able to get away with that um to, tomorrow evening because you, your luck will eventually run out if you don't have 11 men on the field um it's 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 an interesting one as well on the one one thing that would frustrate the life out of john caulfield when he was was the probably the defensive errors and the individual errors for the at loan goals and um, do you think that he's going to persist with the 352 system that he's employed so far or do you maybe see that there might be a change for tomorrow evening um i would have never thought before the season started that he would play 352 because you know the john the, the john coffee that we know from court was it was 433 um and it was always that pretty much push i would be very surprised if he's worked on it throughout preseason um identified this as as the best formation for for the personnel he has i i'd be surprised if he changes it um especially two two games in now i i could be wrong and you know um he might see that with killing bruder back and you know different people available that it might suit them now to go 433 but i would expect to see them 352 tomorrow and that's with absolutely no information so i could be yeah. completely wrong yeah it'd be interesting to see you mentioned killian bruder there Vinny. obviously we've two limerick natives playing with you this year uh killian bruder and shane duggan the former captain of limerick fc uh how is they how have those players been performing for galway uh recently for anyone who hasn't seen them in the, in the limerick area last season they were both uh, fantastic. Dougie got Dougie got Player of the Year. Um, I think everyone that has watched him at Limerick knows the kind of quality he has. Uh, Killian's still a young player, uh, still learning, but he was he was you know an, an ever present last year also. Um, one of our better players um, this year. Shelburne game they weren't not 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 them uh, like obviously Killian wasn't playing, but not Dougie personally. But Galway weren't weren't at their best, and then obviously the at loan game, you know. 
um, didn't didn't go their way. But um, up until those two games, the, the, the two were the better performers. Um, and I think Killian's back for tomorrow, so probably will see him thrown in, um, you know, for, for the full 90 minutes. Yeah, he'll, he'll certainly be pushing for it, you'd imagine, uh, as well off the back of the, the Athlone game. Uh, and you mentioned the Kevin Teeley uh, situation, obviously, where they might appeal the decision. Galway obviously were awarded three points as of last night. Vinny, going forward, do you think that's the way to approach it? Because I do know, in fairness, the FBI have said that every club has been made aware that if you have 14 fit players and you have to call people from the underage up, that that, that will be the way it's done. So maybe Kevin Healy were chancing their arm as the, the official line from the FEI. Do you agree with the decision to give Galway the three points or do you think it might be a dangerous precedent? No, no, I, I, I agree with it. I think, you know, otherwise it'll be just stop start. The only thing that kind of I don't really fully understand is you know, they're, they're allowed to call people in for the 19s, but the 19s aren't allowed to train at the minute. So, you know, are you going to call in a player that hasn't trained in five, six months? So it's it's just a bit up, the, up in the air in that sense. But at the same time, you know, I'm sure it was one case. I, I don't know the particulars of it, but it was one case. And, you know, they, they have quite a large squad. So I'm not sure if they were following guidelines and protocols, then there shouldn't have been the whole squad shouldn't have been in jeopardy so they should have been able to to hope to feel the team you know i know from when i was at galway last year and we had these restrictions it wouldn't have mattered if i had tested positive because i was never in close proximity with any of the other players unless it was directly before the game which obviously you're not going to find out you tested positive two hours before a match you know it obviously was something that he knew the night before or early that morning so I don't really know what's happened in between, but you know, it 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 shouldn't be an issue to be honest. It should. I I, I agree with the with the with the the ruling. I'd agree with you because if you don't do it, if you don't do it, I suppose it'd be a dangerous precedent, as you said, in the other way, in that people will say if they feel like, you know, if they don't feel like playing a game almost, you'd be able to call it off with it with a positive case. But yeah, it's um it's it's interesting. John Caulfield has has done his homework anyway on on Treaty United. I mentioned last week he's nearly been in the Marks field more than myself uh, so far this year. He was straight down to watch them last week once the Kevin Healy game was postponed, and he'll know that obviously as you mentioned how solid Treaty have been in, in the first few games, and that's one thing uh, Jason O'Connor and Noel O'Connor, two of my uh, analysts for the soccer podcast, have mentioned is that they'd worry maybe for Galway in a goal scoring front, which you don't know all about, Finney. Uh, they said you'd be missing the likes of yourself. They have Parry Cunningham, Rory Keaton. Uh, it's probably vital for those that to get off the mark as quickly as possible to try and prove doubters wrong. Yeah, I, I know as a striker it is important to get to get your first goal because um, it's not even about the doubt. Well, for me, it was never about the doubters. It was just staying in the team because, you know, ultimately, no matter what you're contributing outside of it, unless the team is winning... Um, you need to be scoring. Um, and if you're not scoring, you're not going to stay in the team. And the problem is, if if you're not in the team, you're giving someone else an opportunity to score and stay in the team. So um, they do need to get off the mark for the, for, for themselves because they also have Wilson, uh, another young striker there who's who, who's got a bundles of ability. So, I mean, if he gets a sniff, he'll keep himself in the team because he's got goals in him. So for themselves, they, they do need to score. Um, I do see them getting off the mark. It may not be tomorrow, but they're both very good, talented lads. So, um, you know, I don't think they'll be short of goals this year, but um, it will it will be a little bit tougher tomorrow for them because um, I'd imagine Treaty will sit back a little bit and, you know, go away typically want to play on the counter a little bit more. Um, that's, you know, all their front players are very quick. Um, and I'd imagine that that's where they're going to want to catch Treaty when, you know, in the transition, when Treaty have been attacking to, to break because they've got pace everywhere. Um, you know, that's something they didn't have last year with me or Inter Kern, but they, they certainly have it this year. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is that is true. And and I know that, as you said, Treaty will probably sit back and they did that against Bray in the first game away as well, a team that was more reputable than them in terms of the, the starting eleven. I, I know for a fact that uh, Clyde O'Connell and Mark Walsh would certainly be looking to get in among Shane Duggan and 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 really distort his performance. Uh, the, <laughs> actually, Fran- Francili Lombato was a, a big disappointment in terms of his injury and his unfortunate injury, uh, Vinny, because he seemed like a player who really had it all uh, in terms of strength, power, pace. 
uh, and, and would have scored a few goals. So it was the bitterly disappointed for him and the team, actually, that, that he was injured so badly in the last preseason game. Yeah, like um, last year, he kind of came out, burst onto the scene with us. He'd be kind of training the, the season before, but I, I've never, I've never seen uh, a player with the physical attributes he has. He's he's the quickest player I've ever seen. He's he's strong. He's tall. He has everything. He he literally has everything. Um, it was going to be a huge year for him. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if in two or three years, depending obviously how 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 he comes back from this injury. But in two or three years, I'd be shocked if he's not in England because if you're if you're a scout, you just look at him and you're like. He's just ready to go. Yeah. You just obviously he needs coaching, yeah. and he, you know, he needs a lot more on the technical side. He, you know, you know, football and knowledge and all that. But he's got the raw attributes. You can't teach someone. You know, you can't give someone the pace he has. And it's he, um, and he's a really good guy too. On top of it all, he's a nice fella, um, and he he's eager and willing to learn. So I, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't go go far in the in the game. Yeah, it kind of reminds me, I know it's a different scenario, but what you were talking about there kind of reminds me of your former team at Paddy O'Connor with, with Limerick when he was only 16 playing. You know, he had all the raw attributes, just needed that coaching that you see scouts picking up. Uh, you're going to be on co-commentary duty tomorrow night, Vinny. I know you were supposed to be on co-commentary duty in the first evening for LOI TV. And it, of course, it didn't work out due to uh, microphone malfunction. Uh, obviously, a great, great streaming service, though, and it, and it was very high quality on the first night in AMDC Park. So obviously we'll be hoping to see the same tomorrow night. And it's great for supporters, obviously. Yeah, it is. Look, there's, you, you, I think uh, I was on a podcast earlier in the week and you're, you're never going to be able to replicate being at the match, you know, but it's, 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 it's unbelievable that people have this, especially in the first division, have this available that they can go, they can still watch going Irish. Um, and, you know, obviously... <laughs> you know watching on twitter or trying to get updates it's not the same so um it's a brilliant service it's absolutely fantastic um and no i i'm i'm happy to do it um i was asked a, a, a few months ago and you know i was only only delighted um I, I think a lot of people that know me are probably sick of listening to me talk about football but they get get to hear me for another 90 minutes anyways <laughs> and on a final note you're you went down now is in galway folklore third highest goal scorer and the club's history, four different spells at the club. Some great memories to take away from you from your time as well. Yeah, look, um, unfortunately, I, I never got to, you know, challenge for trophies at Galway. Um, it was obviously something that growing up as a kid, I, I, I would have dreamed of. To be honest, I wouldn't have even, um, to, to, to play for Galway would have been enough, but it would have been nice to, you know, maybe qualify for, for European competition or, or, you know, win something, but um get to getting to drive into Terryland every every second friday and play for the club was 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 unbelievable um you know looking back now and kind of placing myself in in the 10 year old me in his shoes you know i wouldn't have been able to dream that i would have had that amount of time playing for the club you know um so you know i i don't think i ever took it for granted but um you know i had some 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 very fond memories yeah, I, I certainly can imagine so, and, and plenty of people that would would have interviewed you in, in AMDC Park and, and Galway in general. Uh, we want to thank you once again, Vinny, for, for joining us this evening. It was great, great speaking to you about your career and obviously the game tomorrow night. And I hope you will not have a smile on your face <laughs> following tomorrow evening once Street United beat Galway, if that was possible at all. But uh, again, once again, thank you very much for joining us and uh, best of luck in your role in LOI TV and, and the rest of your outside football career. Thanks a million, Adrian. Appreciate it.